So in this video, I wanted to do a line review of Lamy's ballpoint pens. Now I don't own every one of them, but what I own is a pretty good representation of what Lamy makes outside of say they're super high end at least. So I wanted to do a quick run through of these, what I own, why I own them, talk about the pens a little bit, and then talk about what I don't have. So you can get a good overview of Lamy's ballpoint pens. And if you like the video, please tell me. It's kind of a new video for me. So just to go through them quickly, this is a CP1 Trio, a Lamy Unique, a Lamy Noto, an Econ, an Ion. I have three Lamy 2000s, which I'll get to in a minute, a Pico, and a Scribble. And uh, again, this is not by any means every ballpoint Lamy makes, but these are the ones I own. I wanted to talk about them a little bit. So just to run through them, just from left to right quickly, start off with the CP1 Trio. This is a multi-pen, one, two, three. So a two plus one, two pencils, two pens, one pencil. It has the stainless steel design. The Some of the CP1s used to use brushed stainless steel and they might still outside of the US, but now the CP1 has moved over into the all matte black, but this has retained the stainless steel. It's a good looking pen, has the spring-loaded clip. Again, Trio, so it has three choices. It uses a standard D1 multi-pen refill. It has an eraser, which is nice. It's got a nice weight to it. I, I do not like the multi-pen twist mechanism in this pen. It just doesn't feel great. Other pens, uh, other pencil and pen companies do it better, like uh, Uni Mitsubishi or Uniball. But just a cool pen, it has a nice weight to it. And uh, I don't know, I just kind of have a soft spot, spot for it, even though it's not a great pen. So this is, just make a list here so everyone can keep track of what's going on. This is the CP1 Trio. Man, cannot write. Next up, this is a vintage pencil. A pen rather called the Lamy Unique. That's U N I C. This is a telescopic pen, so it pushes out, pushes out again. Really beautiful body, just a really awesome piece of design. And these are a little bit hard to find; no longer made. And I've done a video on them in the past. Just a super cool pen. Like all the other pens, all the other full size pens in this video, it uses Lamy's M16 refill for better or worse. Uh, but it is cool that Lamy has maintained that refill through the years, even if it's not a refill that a lot of people tend to like. And we'll get into the M16 in a little bit. So this is the unique. One interesting thing about this is it's super long. So here it is. And here's it next to a full-size Lamy rollerball, the Safari. It is a good inch longer than that Safari, which is just a lot of pen, even though it is so skinny. Just surprisingly long. Just makes it kind of quirky. This is not the most comfortable pen to write with. This is the Lamy Econ. Uh, kind of highly designed, maybe over-designed. It's got that sort of clip that uh, kind of adheres to the body shape. It's got a pill-shaped button, which is a little odd. And uh, this piece looks like it's metal. It's actually plastic. The whole pen is plastic. It's about, you know, maybe a $15 or $20 pen. Uh, just sort of interesting. Not that comfortable to write with. It's got a kind of a cool silent click. I don't know. It's just like not my favorite, just an interesting pen. So this is the Lamy the Noto. Now we have the Econ. Econ's another affordable pen from Lamy. You know, Econ, as you would guess. It's got this cool clip that has kind of cut out shape to it, all metal body, metal cone piece. It's really well built for a 20 or so dollar pen. Uh, and it's not very popular, so it's an interesting one to have. It's got some cool little quirks here, like this cone piece is surprisingly gigantic. It adds a lot of weight to the pen. And it's got these cutouts, which are actually, you could, you could see through it. So you see this piece of stainless steel 
in the pen body. It's a little bit hard to make out in the light, just kind of interesting. Again, like the rest of the full-size Lamy ballpoints, it use that M16 refill, which is a highly proprietary shape. So you're kind of stuck with it, which is one of the things people do not like about the Lamy ballpoints. But again, this is the Econ, surprisingly cool. Not sure it's worth $25 or whatever, but I do enjoy using this one. Now we have the Ion. This is one of Lamy's newest ballpoints. I think it came out in 2017. It's got a lot of cool features to it, like this dual aluminum. This is satin, this is brushed, and it has stainless steel, chrome. It's got a, it has a cool twist mechanism, which uh, is nice, but a lot of people have criticized this because, so you twist it one way to extend the refill, you twist it the other way to close it. But if you twist it further, the pen comes apart and you get at the refill right but half the time when you're trying to open it up and get at that refill the entire pen will just kind of come apart and you will come away with this aluminum piece and you'll just be looking at this thing thinking man what did i just spend all this money on this is just not well designed uh, because it uses a press fit in here where it really should not and you can see what happens right there. Uh, what would happen, I try to get the refill out and the whole pen internal came with me. It's just sort of a weird design and it uses this press fit of aluminum on aluminum, which is generally not ideal. But anyway, aside from that clear design misstep, it is really a beautiful pen. It's got a nice weight to it and a surprisingly large size. So if you want a wider ballpoint, this is a nice choice. This is the Ion. And despite it's like very obvious design quirks, I do tend to have a soft spot for this pen. Now we have two Lamy 2000s. Uh, why do I have two? And I have two because I actually own multiple Lamy 2000 ballpoint pens. I own them because these things are very easy to find on used marketplaces like eBay, and you can sometimes get them for under $30, which to me sounds like a great deal. It's got all the cool features from Lamy's famous 2000 fountain pen, like the Macrolon body, the metal clip that's spring-loaded, metal hardware, that cool tapered shape, whether you like it or hate it. So this is the 2000 ballpoint. And these pens have been around forever, which is one of the reasons they're so easy to find on the marketplace. Uh, like you see here, I don't know if you can make that out, but this one is made, you can see it under the clip, it's made in Germany. And this one is an older one and it doesn't have anything under the clip, but right here in the body, it says Lamy 2000 west germany so uh that means it's probably from the uh i mean anywhere before the early 90s so that's pretty cool and if you look at the two they're in almost identical condition so just very cool that these pens they feel the same they look the same same great click obviously as i've remarked many times same m16 refill and this pen might be uh 25 years old so Maybe I, uh, I don't know, just seems cool to me. So Lamy 2000, and you can buy these used. The thing you wanna do is just make sure you replace that refill. A 20 year old ballpoint refill is not gonna work as well as a brand new one. The formula's been changed. The ink gets really sludgy. So if one of you have one of these that's not writing well, just buy a new refill. I have another Lamy 2000. And this one has a, instead of being made of macrolon, that fiberglass material is made of a heavy dark wood called black wood. And you can see the mechanism up here. This is metal, whereas this is the macrolon. It's a different material. This one has like, I think it's an aluminum instead of a steel. It's hard to tell. It's definitely all metal though. And it's matte instead of this brushed different clip you can see under there it's different it's just a nicer mechanism and you can see this clip 
very simple. Germany is stamped on there. Here, it's a specialty clip. You can see Germany is under there, just in a nicer way. This pen is a lot heavier because it is that heavy wood. And see how this pen comes apart? The metal piece comes off from away from the wood. And then with the Macrolon ones, look where it splits. Splits here in the middle, not here at the tip. Just not a huge deal. It's just interesting to think how much work and how much tooling has to go to into one of these special editions. The, uh, two th the Lamy 2000 and the black wood, and I've had it also in the stainless steel. I could tell you right now, save your money, every one of the special editions I've used is worse than the original. Uh, but I still kind of want to collect them all. So this is the Lamy 2000 Blackwood. And this is the heaviest of the Lamy 2000 ballpoints. Uh, I have never used and really want to try the titanium one. It's hard to find. And the ceramic. I have had the stainless steel. The edition... 2000 and uh, I really don't like those just uh, not very pleasant pen to use for me the blackwood and the Texas which is a light brown wood are both nicer in my mind next up we have the Lamy scribble this is a small pen let's look at it next to the 2000 even they have a similar shape but it's a lot smaller this is like a plastic body pen. It looks like it's wood or something, but it's plastic. You can clearly see the seam down there, which is a little bit annoying. Which these things aren't that cheap. It's probably about a $50 pen, but you can buy them used for much less than that. It has that stumpy little clip. And then all this material looks a little bit like the Lamy 2000, which is interesting. Again, the shape is much like the 2000. The Scribble is most known for being a pencil, like a clutch pencil, but it, it comes in this cool ballpoint. It's a little bit small, but not too small. And it's just uh, a cool thing to have on your desk. So this is interesting because this is a Lamy ballpoint, but it uses this refill. This is the Lamy M22, just a micro ballpoint. Uh, writes a lot like the M16, but it's just not a full size refill. So it's one of the few Lamy ballpoints that uses a different refill. And this is the Lamy I don't know why I keep saying Lamy. They're all Lamy's. Lamy's the scribble. And the M21 is a nice writer. Sometimes, it, to me, it actually feels smoother than the M16. Uh, but it's hard to say. Silent click. Listen to this. Very cool mechanism there. Okay. The last Lamy ballpoint I have is this one. This is called the Lamy Pico. And this is their tiny little everyday carry type telescopic. So... It's got no features here except for a Lamy little button, but it's not a button, this is a roll stop. And you can't press it. All it could do is just stop your pen from rolling. To extend the pen, you push this piece down and then it extends. And now it's, I don't know, not quite a full size pen, but pretty much a good size pen. And here it is for reference next to the Safari. Very similar, obviously it's got a weird little step down here and the strange looking tip that's poked out and you push it again, that collapses and now it's back to being a micro pen, which is very cool. But now this is something you could put in your pocket and it doesn't have any sharp edges or anything like that. So this is the Lamy Pico, another one of Lamy's very cool design exercises. Just a fun pen to have and a fun pen to use. It also uses that Lamy M16 uh, sorry, M22 refill. So this is the Pico. This refill is getting a little bit old. I do not keep a lot of spare M22 refills lying around. So the Pico, they tend to be overpriced, to be honest. Uh, you might see these things used in the $30 to $40 price range and new, like $40 to $50. I don't think it's worth it. Just a fun, quirky pen. And that mechanism is quite cool and it's a lot of fun to play with if you have one of these at your desk. 
So that is my, I would say my line review of Lamy's ball points. I really disliked Lamy's ball points for a very long time because I find this M16 refill to be just really problematic. It has this strange shape. So putting another refill in its place is almost impossible. And that's because this little black piece here, it, it doesn't, it looks like it does nothing, but what it does is it actually catches onto a little shelf here. And I cannot push this in and have it stay down unless that shelf works. So a lot of pens, the mechanism at the top, the, uh, let's see if I can find that. Yep, the mechanism at the top is what holds the pen writing tip down. But that doesn't happen with Lamy's ball points. Rather, look at this, if you put this in and you twist it, and now you could write like this. This is actually as stuck as it's ever going to be. It needs a twisting action for it to come and retract, come back and retract. So so this piece is actually functional, which is a problem for replacing this because no other refill has this. The one thing you could do is get a D1 adapter. A D1 refill basically looks just like this. It's what's in the CP1 trio and combine basically this front half with a D1. But those adapters cost like 20 bucks and I bought a few of them and some are okay and some aren't. So at the end of the day, I feel like you're better off just buying a couple new M16 refills. It's a really nice refill in the fine and the broad, I, I'm, I like it the least in the medium. Uh, and then, yeah, so if you are in the buying mode for one of these, I would say, I'm gonna rule out the unique. If you want one of these, you probably already have it. It's such a specialty pen, they're hard to find, they're expensive, and they're not fun to use, so probably not worth it. Pico is okay, but I don't love it. Econ, I would recommend. I think this is a nice pen, although it's just kind of bland. Skip the Noto. Unless you could find a good deal on a used Ion, I wouldn't buy it. Lamy 2000, I would say this is the Lamy ballpoint to get. It's their best ballpoint by a long shot. Do not buy it in a special edition. It's not worth the money. The scribble is fun, but just not great overall. The pencils are better. And then the Lamy is just not good at multi pens. That's not the one to get. So at the end of the day, Lamy Econ, I think is interesting, but probably not worth it unless you're a major pen geek. And the one to get is the Lamy 2000 ballpoint. Pretty cool pen overall. And save yourself some money, buy it used. You could find these in great condition all day long. And that is a quick overview of all of Lamy's ballpoints. I will just note now, in case anyone's still watching, uh, I do not have a Vista or LX or Safari. I had a few of them and I kept hacking at them to figure out how I can get a ballpoint refill in there and I broke them all. So I refuse to buy any more. They're just not that great. I don't have a Logo or a Logo M Plus. Those are just a lot like the Econ but less nice. So I don't really see a reason to do that. And I've had a Dialog 1, which is their iconic triangle pencil. And I really just don't find it to be comfortable to use. And I don't think it's worth the money. So even though it's such a cool design exercise, I just don't love that one. And then there's some expensive ones like the Emporium and the Persona in ballpoint. And those are just too expensive to get as a ballpoint, so I skipped them. And then there's the Weirdo Pure, which I don't have, which is an oversight on my part. Anyway, that's everything you could ever wanna know about Lamy's ballpoint pens. Thanks for watching.